Hey everybody and welcome to episode 439 of Unboxing Wednesdays for comics not quite arriving in stores on Wednesday, August 15th, 2020. I'm your host Kevin Hickey from StadiumComics.com and with me as always is Mr. Ricky Lima. Ricky, say hello to everybody. Yeah, that's Mr. Potato Ricky Lima to you. Uh, <laughs> how can I forget? Yeah. How is uh how's the potato life treating you this week? Uh you know, it's pretty good. It's nice and cool in here. It was, it was snowing recently, so that kind of sucked. Well, but, I mean, the good thing about being buried under the ground is uh a little bit of a little light dusting of snow doesn't really affect you too much. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So just, <laughs> you know. I can see you're really excited to be here today, Ricky. That's awesome, man. Glad you glad you showed up. It's late. <laughs> Why do we gotta film this late? Late. No, no, no. It's Wednesday morning. Right. Oh, right. It's early. It's, it's early. early. Why do so early? Um, so yes, everyone. Uh unboxing Wednesdays here again for another week. As we uh threatened last week, um, as long as the comic industry is shut down and Diamond is not shipping uh new books out. Uh, we are going to be here in protest each week uh, talking about uh, no new comics and what that means for the comic industry, of course, and uh, how everybody is dealing uh, in the comics industry with the fallout from COVID-19, which uh, is affecting all of our lives right now, of course. And we are coming to you, uh, well, Ricky's coming to you from the ground uh, as yeah. Potato Ricky. Yeah, boy. And I'm coming to you from 60 meters. Uh, that's metric for all of our American friends out there. 60 meters below the surface of Stadium Comics in the Stadium Comics self-isolation bunker. I have my uh, favorite graded books uh, behind me on the walls. I decorated those last week. We didn't really talk about them, Ricky. But uh, I, got some, uh, I got some good books up there. Are those so all pieces? These are all Stadium Comics exclusives, and uh, actually, this isn't even all of them. I would, I would need, uh, you, you know, you wouldn't know it, but uh, I would need uh, another full wall to put all the rest of them up. It's crazy. Right. So, I don't, I don't collect too many graded comic books, but uh, you know, comic comic books that were only available at Stadium, uh, I tend to send those out for grading. Because I want to preserve those, uh, you know, for future generations of, uh, you know, the Hickey family. Mm, nice, nice. <laughs> because, you know, that's going to be my legacy that I pass yeah. down. It's, there you go. Some exclusive comics. It's gonna are, be uh, CGC, or the CGC uh, plastic, is that UV resistant? Is it not going to fade? Uh, I don't think it is UV resistant. And I do, yeah. I do, you can't see it, but I do have a window right above. Uh, the uh, comics, uh, you know, uh, that lets some sunlight in. So I should probably block that out um, so that the sun doesn't come in. But there's no direct sunlight on them. True. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, we're in the self-isolation bunker. Where sunlight, you know, doesn't reach down here as well as other parts of uh, our store. So yeah. uh, anyhow, let's get on to a store update. Um Ricky, we have an exciting announcement. We have a Facebook Live sale coming up. That's going to be this Thursday, April 16th. That's tomorrow, if you're watching this on Wednesday. And that's going to be at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's going to be a live sale on Facebook. And uh, here, I'll read you some details from it. Um, Join us on Thursday, April 16th, as we go live to announce the details and launch our next Facebook Live sale. So we're going to be really quite secret about the stuff that we're going to have on sale as we tend to do with these and our unboxing Wednesday's viewers are finding out about it first. Uh, so we'll be sending out an email to our uh, customers a little bit later in the day on Wednesday. Uh, but uh, here is your heads up. So we've got an awesome mix of ratio variant covers, first appearances, graded comics, uh, some fun back issue lots, um, and they're all going to be ready to go, and it's all stuff that we have in stock and that we'll be shipping soon after the sale. Uh, included in this incredible mix of books is going to be the first full appearance of the new character, 
punchline from uh, the Batman comics from uh, first print copies of Year of the Villain Hell Arisen issue number three. So that's one spoiler of, of, of a book that we're going to be offering. And that was a very uh, sought after book um, that we have a few copies left of and we're going to be making available as part of our live sale. Um, if you've taken part of any of our live sales in the past, the format's going to be much the same. If you haven't taken part in any of our live sales before, it's, it's pretty fun. What we do is basically I'll show the book or, or a lot of books that we're going to be putting on sale. We'll talk about it. We'll tell you what the price is. And as soon as I show it on screen, we make it live on our website so that uh, it truly is a live sale. It may, the, the items go, are, aren't available until I mention it on the Facebook live stream and then on our website uh, using this fantastic thing called technology. Uh, we, we make the item live and people can add it to their carts and check out with it. Uh, we've got a, a little, we've had some hiccups in the past because uh, one of the things that our website does, we run on Shopify. Um, so Shopify will let you put items into a cart. Uh, it'll let a bunch of people put items into a cart, even if there's only one of them. And um, how it distinguishes whether it's in stock or not is whether or not that item has been checked out and sold. So we like to remind everybody that when you're doing uh, a live sale like this, if there's something that you really want and you don't want to miss it and it's very limited, check out and, and complete the transaction. That's the only way to ensure that the item is yours. Just having it in your cart's not good enough. I can go into Costco right now, fill up my cart with like, 18 packs of toilet paper rolls and I can walk around the store and uh, I can just decide ah, I don't need these 18 packs and I can leave the cart and walk out of Costco. And you know, that's not a, that's not a transaction. A transaction hasn't happened. So uh, we need the transaction to go through first. You know what I'm saying, Ricky? No, I hear you. I, buy, I do that all the time. I just yeah. walk around with all the toilet paper and then leave. You wait till a bunch of people yell at you, call you a monster. Yeah, uh, and then then you leave it, and then they're like, "Was there just a potato in here?" Pushing a <laughs> shopping cart. That's pretty yeah, crazy. Exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, we're really excited about the sale. It's the first one we've done in a couple months, and uh, I think the timing is great for it. Uh, everybody uh, is looking for some excitement, and uh, in the form of <laughs> giving Stadium Comics money. Uh, so what better time to uh, put on a live sale? So. Thursday, 16th of April, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Mark your calendars. Are you going to be there, Ricky? Yes. Are you filming in the store? Are you going to do it from your bunker? From the bunker. From the bunker, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, the internet uh, actually is a little bit better in the bunker than at the store. So we're going to be filming it here at the bunker. Um, uh, you were at the last one, right? We, you were at the, the filming. The last yeah, time. I was the camera guy. Yeah. Well, you don't need to be the camera guy this time. You can just participate as a uh, a potato who's uh, somewhat interested in what we have to show, and um, you know, make maybe make a purchase or two. But you don't have to you don't have to put your your game potato face on for this one. Then. <laughs> you can right. sit this one out. Um, so no new comics this week again, uh, like we mentioned. Uh, we continue at the store to reach out to some members that have items in their pull list to make sure that they have some comics to get them through this period of self-isolation. Uh, we've been successful in getting a whole bunch of books shipped out to our members. Uh, and another thing we did last week is we shipped out all the comic boxers for the month of April. And uh, so we got all those out to our customers all over the world. Um, and we are currently working on May's comic boxer right now and getting that ready. Yes, uh, we will still have comics. Uh, we we planned we planned out May quite far in advance, so we we have uh, we have the books to do May's comic boxer. So we're excited about that. So lots still going on behind the scenes at Stadium Comics. Lots coming up in the future. Ricky, what is going on behind the scenes with you, my good potato man? Nothing much. Just you know, still working on uh, comics coming up. We got I got actually like quite a bit of projects going on. Yeah, Undergrowth still going on. Uh, I have the Millennium Bomb that I got going on. I got another project with another person that's going on. <laughs> oh, top secret stuff, eh? Yeah, yeah, right? And then and then there's like um, the, you remember that 24-hour uh, comic jam comic that I did, like 2011? Yeah, 
Yeah, and, I do remember. And I finished that, I think. It was really messed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, so. was it Huma Anne? Huma yeah, Anne? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, you don't even remember the title of your own book. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so listen, man, tell me, I, I know we talked about it the last couple episodes, but tell me a little bit more about Undergrowth. How do people get a hold of it? How do people read it? What's it about? Give us, give us the backstory. Well, undergrowth is uh, it's like um, inspired by like old school mech anime. So that's like I was watching a lot of like uh, Evangelion and like old Gundam and stuff. And I was like, man, this is really cool. I want to do something like this. So I came up with the story. It's about these like this planet who's being invaded by these robots. Then these kids are killed, and then they they get brought back to life by the planet and given like these giant like organic mechs to work with. Uh, and then the rest of the story is just the kids dealing with their issues and uh, killing some giant robots. So, That's pretty awesome. Yeah, man, it's pretty good. Uh, so, you know, when you were doing this book, you, you were obviously you were watching a lot of mech anime, doing some research, getting mm -hmm. into this. Does, does all the mech anime, does it hold up after all these years? Like I was a big fan of Evangelion uh yeah you know, when, when it first came to north america but like does it does it still hold up i mean i think so when i was especially like the, the the 70s gundam when i was watching i was like holy crap this is the coolest thing in the world so i mean i guess like it is kind of dated at points but uh but overall it's like really it holds up maybe i just didn't know but I thought it was really good especially like evangelion you watch that and you're like oh my god the things that they were like dealing with we're like so far, like far in advance than I don't know. Then the some of the anime you watch nowadays is is kind of like I guess it's so like people have expectations when it come when they watch anime. So then the shows like cater to that, and then you just get like really tropey stuff that's like really boring. But to me, the old school stuff is like what you know created those tropes. So it, it feels fresher, which is weird. Right. I mean, Evangelion was so uh, different than other anime uh, and, and still is different in that it, um, you know, aside from like the fight sequences and stuff like that, the animation was kind of limited. Like you'd have you'd have yeah. long scenes where it was just like a static shot of like mm -hmm. Shinji talking to his dad and stuff. And it was like <laughs> just 10, 10 minutes of dialogue. And yeah, yeah, and, exactly. uh, it's just, it's just crazy. It. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely sets the mood for the for the show. Uh, if you had to recommend one anime right now that people, uh, one mech anime that people should go and try to watch while they're in self isolation, what would it be? If you had to just uh, pick one, I'd probably say like the original Gundam series, like from the like seventy eight or something. That is so good, and I didn't even realize it was so good. Like <laughs> you watch it, and you're like, holy crap, this is amazing. All right, all right, cool. And then also Evangelion, if you if you're like short on time, Evangelion's only what like fifteen yeah, episodes. Like, or yeah, and then there's like, and then and then they redid it all recently too. I I, I yeah, haven't, I haven't seen any of that, but yeah. Um. Okay, and then where can people get Undergrowth if they want to go? Uh, they can go to my website, uh, linepressonline.com. I have physical copies of one, two, and three, and digital only of four, because we didn't print any. But right. you know, yeah. Well, print is coming of that soon, I'm sure. And once convention season uh, comes back in some way, shape, or form, yeah. Are exactly. you worried about Are you worried about conventions at all after this? Uh, no, I think I think the like, especially in twenty twenty one, I think. You know they'll be back, but uh, I do think like you know New York Comic Con in October. I think if it does run, it would definitely be different. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's like it, it's conventions are so crazy. It's just so packed with people, and um, uh, you know I love New York Comic Con. Never never had the chance to go to San Diego, but um, uh, I don't see how they um, how they run it. Under the current current circumstances, I I think big shows like that and Fan Expo, um, they've really got to kind of figure out what their business model is going to look like in the next year. I think until 
until there's a vaccine found for COVID. Yeah, exactly. Or, or the new thing that they're talking about is um, testing people for the COVID uh, antib antibodies, which means um, if, you, if you've had COVID and you've recovered from it, uh, you have these antibodies uh, in your system that would indicate that you've had it and that you are now immune to it, they're hoping. Uh, but they, they just don't know enough yet, and 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 we're, they're really hoping that if you've had it once, it really makes you immune against getting it again. Yeah. And then uh, if they can test for that, then uh, you know there some people are saying like you you'll have like a card to say that you've had had a COVID immunity and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's kind of like crazy. where you like you give your kids COVID so that they can like. Oh no 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 nobody nobody wants to give their 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 family COVID. Um, but it's just crazy to think that, that that's where we're at with this, where we're thinking of giving people ID cards that say like, oh, I've had it and I'm, I'm safe. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what it's going to look like for conventions after this. Like I know like comic shops will pretty much go back to the same way that they've always operated. Yeah. But, uh, the convention scene is going to be an interesting one to watch, see how that they respond to that. We, you know, a lot of our, our friends, Ricky, depend on conventions, for their source of income, um, you know, as, as a big part of their source of income from, from retailers that we know and comic book artists that we know and uh, creators and, you know, uh, distributors and publishers. And, uh, you know, if, if conventions go forward and they can't have the same crowds that they're used to having in those buildings, then it's going to seriously impact um, everybody in the, in the, you know, in the chain from the people putting on the shows right down to the creators and artist alley, right down to the fans and the celebrities getting yeah. photographs and just, there's so much, there's so much that it impacts. Yeah, it's um, probably good for like the smaller shows. They're probably like pretty excited. Cause you know, they, they can in the future, they can probably still run as normal, you know, and then maybe more people right. will go to the smaller shows. You know? True. True. Maybe you'll see more of that. More of or that maybe, word. you know, fan expo does like, a whole week of a show and only lets in like you you buy a certain amount of tickets just for each day so it's like limits the amount of people maybe but. it just the cost on that would would probably be just astronomical yeah. on like a, 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 a unless a week unless, off work well i mean unless the convention centers and venues you know offer offer deals for people putting on shows so that they can do things like that i mean i guess there's a lot of unanswered questions and i, I think it's just gonna be really interesting to see how it all unfolds um yeah. well speaking of the comic industry uh diamond comics our main distributor is still shut down uh the main printer of books uh which is based out of quebec they're still shut down um and uh, there was a little bit of drama this week. I don't, I don't know if you caught it at all, Ricky, but uh, Alterna, Alterna Press. Uh, what? On, More drama with them? Impossible. Well, well, on their Facebook page, they announced um, that they were canceling all future solicitations with Diamond, and um, that they were not going to, no longer going to uh, offer books to Diamond, and that they were going to go direct to consumer and direct to retailer through their website. Um, uh, because they were saying <laughs> that there was news that there's going to be no new comics until August. So, uh, of course, like a lot of people caught on to this story, Rich at Bleeding Cool put it up on his site and said like, you know, click baby headlines, like no new comics till August. And of course, when you're a comic retailer and you're seeing stuff like that, you start to panic a little bit. Uh, but it was missing, you know, it was very vague in the way that it was, um, put out there and I think it was missing some key information um, and it's and it's come to uh, it's come to like common knowledge now that um, what they might have been referring to was that if you know the business turns back on again by like June then Diamond's going to put out a previews magazine for June and that would mean you know when we when previews comes out it's usually two months ahead right? So if we get a previews magazine in June, that's going to be for stuff that's shipping in August. Um, the last previews magazine that came out came out just before everything shut down. Um, so that would have been for, um, forget if it was February or for March, but in any event, um, if it was for February for April shipping dates, 
the theory is is that that February previews is still out there and still valid, and anything that was originally going to ship in April will now be shipping in you know June, let's say, right, yeah. or May, or whenever whenever things turn back on again. Um, so, it, I think it was uh, I think it was a little bit of a uh, overreaction uh, or uh, you know. It's a little vague booking, I think, on the on the part of Alterna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, un, unintentional. I don't think they 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 intended to cause any panic or controversy with it. Um, but interesting that they've decided now to forego Diamond as a publisher, um, or as a distributor, I should say. They're the publisher. Uh, what do you think about that? What do you, what do you think about them, like you know, circumventing Diamond? Well, I think a lot of people are uh, have been upset with Diamond for a while. I mean, I know certainly, like as a retailer, when I was working there, you you could see all these like things that Diamond would do, and you know, there's nothing really you could do to fix that. So you just kind of, you know, take it. But now, now there's maybe options showing up. Well, options in the in like direct to retailer or direct to consumer, like that can get a little uh, cumbersome, I guess, if you're dealing with. I mean, you know, for as much as we gripe about Diamond as retailers, it is kind of convenient to have one one-stop shop for all of the stuff you need to order, right? Uh, you fill out one order form, you get all your shipments from all the publishers consolidated through Diamond and then sent to your store. Um, you know, to have to deal with individual publishers uh, on a case-by-case -case basis or a month-to-month -month basis, um, it's going to be a lot of work. Um, well, so, what if what if there was like some kind of platform where everyone is on that then you know retailers use that one platform, but then those orders get shipped directly from the publishers. You know what I mean? So it's like you're still kind of dealing with one umbrella company, but then all the work gets done through the publishers. See, but then you don't get any of the shipping discounts that you know Diamond gets. So then shipping is like. Right. Which you know, shipping from U.S. to Canada, yeah. uh, I think sometimes be pretty expensive. So, uh, you know that, but that's that's not uh, out of the realm of possibility, Ricky. Like you know, having one like um, ordering back end mm -hmm. company, and they take a cut on every order put in, and they don't actually physically warehouse any of the stuff. Um, they just take the orders and you know transfer the funds between. Um, uh, you know, stores and publishers, and then the publishers yeah, exactly. on them to fulfill it. Um, yeah, I think you should. I think you should get working on that, Ricky. Get what? The next big website. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Lime Press. No way. Lime Distribution. <laughs> then you have one company who's like focused on making the the whole process really good. Like they could work on this, like on an app that like works really well and works with like sure. retailers and stuff and you know because right now diamond is like split between not only like promotion i mean i guess they don't really do promotion but they're you know caught between distribution and you know their sales channel and stuff so yeah and, you, and you'd have to and you'd have to have um uh like you know the publishers would have to have the ability and you know uh like, like logistically they'd have to be able to be able to ship the stuff and i don't think a lot of the publishers right now are set up for that you don't have warehouses and right yeah. right maybe this company also has a warehouse but then then they're just dying <laughs> now you're, yeah, now you're right? the baggage right. man, so anyway um so no that's an interesting thought um so i think that whole alternative thing is sorted out and uh they're saying that you know, we could see comics back uh, uh, up and running, new comics shipping out to stores by some point in May if things are, you know, ready to go by then. But, again, it's uh, it's day by day. Things are changing rapidly. Uh, and, you know, nobody's making any um, big commitments right now. We're just going to see how this whole thing unfolds. Um, so no new digital books uh, being released again this week by the big publishers. So I think it's safe to say now, three, four weeks in, that uh, uh, for now at least they're they're holding the line on that and they're not going to be releasing uh, new copies of 
um, single issues digitally in advance of them shipping at the stores. Uh, so that's great for shops like mine. Um, and then there's some uh, some good news going on in the comic industry right now. Uh, there's a bunch of fundraisers going on for comic shops. Uh, the, ma the main one being with um, an organization called BINC, the Book Industry Charity Foundation. Uh, they're running um, a program called uh, Creators for Comics, and there's a website, creatorsforcomics.com, and comic creators are auctioning off work to support comic shops. So people will bid on these items through auction, and uh, the funds will get collected by uh, BINC and then distributed to comic shops who apply for assistance through them. Um, also, like DC Comics has contributed 250000 to this fund, uh, Jim Lee has been doing a sketch a day uh, on on his uh, social media accounts, and then auctioning that off and sending the funds to the uh, BI or uh, BNIC. Um, only downside is for shops like mine, not located in the U.S., is we can't apply for the funding. So it's U.S. shops only that are going to get the benefit from all of that stuff. Uh, so not sure how uh, you know Canadian and uh, UK stores and Australian stores and stuff like that and stores all over the world, you know, I guess we'll have to just go through our normal government channels for any assistance or just run a bunch of Facebook live sales, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, but I think that that's kind of cool that everybody's kind of coming together to, to raise uh, funds for, for the shops. Ricky, what can you offer as a creator for comics right now? Uh, in terms of an auctionable item oh man i don't know uh, nothing really uh, especially as an indie comic guy like nobody would really want, want any of the stuff that maybe, I have. maybe one maybe one of your roots uh you're from you know your your potato crop yeah there you go there you go yeah. uh yeah grow your, grow your own version of ricky lima yeah yeah, I don't know, man. Like, as an indie creator, you don't have a lot of clout to raise, you know, twenty five or $250,000. Uh, oh. I don't know. I guess, like, the best I could do is, like, do a sketch for people. But, I mean, the sketches would stink. So, <laughs> I don't know. So, what you're saying is basically you're doing everybody a favor. You're doing comic shops. Uh, much like we have to stay home uh, yeah. to keep everybody safe. You're going to just uh, put pencils down, uh, <laughs> keep the comic world and industry yeah. safe. Okay, exactly. I got you. I got you. Everybody's got to contribute in their own way, right? Um, <laughs> Rob Liefeld, who usually uh, takes a lot of crap from from people, is actually doing a really cool thing. He's doing a sketch a day as well, and he's randomly um, just PayPaling comic shops. Like he'll pick a comic shop and. Let's say this sketch is going to benefit this shop and uh, people will, will buy his, uh, you know, the, 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 his, his commission, uh, pay like, you know, I think one, one sold for like 2,500 bucks. And then he just PayPal's the comic shop, that money as, as like a, a little boost to them. Uh, and a really interesting one I heard was Donny Cates, the writing superstar, Donny Cates. Um, He's been going into like he's just been arranging with random comic shops to pay off their <laughs> member pull files. So the the stuff that's in the members yeah. pull section, he's just been yeah, paying yeah. them off. And then he's saying to them like, "Okay, I paid off your books," uh, and and I think he's doing it anonymously. I'm not sure how that's working. But then he's like, "Yeah, you know, if yours yours is paid off, uh, you know, maybe take the money that you were gonna spend, and you know, buy something else to support the comic industry, right?" So really cool. Lots of, lots of really great um, things going on out there uh, where creators and people that love the industry are coming together to uh, support everybody through this time. Um, so that's really good to see. Have you seen anything cool that people are doing? Um, hmm. Not too uh, much <laughs> uh, I know – for like my my day job, Jude Law read one of our books on like a uh, Instagram like live reading. He like read one of them. And it was pretty cool. It was about can, we get, yeah. can we get Jude Law to read one of your comics? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's call, up. Let's call him up. Be like, yo, Jude Law, read uh, 
Black Hole Hunters Club. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of live reading, we should throw the link up uh, in this episode. One of your one of the comics that you did for an uh, arts organization yeah. uh, locally here in uh, the in Peel region, which is where uh, Stadium Comics is located. Uh, they they uh, they commissioned you to to do a, a story about the history of Peel region. And, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and and they've done a live reading of it, and it was actually pretty well done. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's live. I mean, there's like sound effects and stuff, but well, yeah, okay. So like, it was a a dramatic reading. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we should definitely link to that down in the uh, do it here. All right, cool. Um, all right. So last week we asked a question. I like to ask questions on this show uh, for prizes from time to time. And uh, last week, of course, it was how would you enjoy preparing, cooking, and eating potato, Ricky? Uh, Ricky, why don't you take us through some of the answers? Yeah. Uh, so Ken Ives, which uh, Kevin, you added these things to the notes, but they're publicly subscribed to us. The, the amount of time that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I think YouTube just does oh, that. Yeah. yeah. So Ken Ives, he's been subscribed to us for five years. That's crazy. Nice. Thank you, so, Ken Ives. And Ken, I said I would slice potato Ricky thinly, add grated cheese and butter, and bake them in the oven to make the ultimate comfort food, potatoes au gratin. Yum. So there you, you know, go. I love potatoes au gratin, and they were, uh, you know, they're, they were my precursor to the world of poutine, right? Because mm, nice. they're like, they're not French yeah. fries, but they're like sliced potatoes, and then you put cheese on them. What is a gratin, though? I mean, what is it's, that? <laughs> it's French. I mean, we should know this. Wouldn't it be like but, cheese, like potato o cheese or something? I don't know. What? Yeah. <laughs> o, o fromage? Yeah, yeah. Good. All right. So uh, Flatlander said potato riggy would be cooked as a jacket potato with butter and cheese. What is a jacket potato? Is it like unpeeled? Uh, I think it's when you, uh, like a baked potato kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like that. Well, you know, I certainly like the jacket. <laughs> uh, potato, Ricky. Uh -huh. you like um, okay, Joker's Midnight <laughs> Show, which uh, doesn't have the subscriber thing on it, but I'm pretty sure Joker's Midnight Show has been subscribed for a long time. Long time, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they say my mashed potato dish go-to is mashed with butter and milk, garlic, then cut up sun-dried tomatoes into tiny pieces mm. and add some of the oil from the sun-dried tomato jar, add salt and pepper to taste. Uh, it should whip nice and fluffy delish. Interesting. Tomatoes. Okay. It's amazing. It's like a whole recipe that just went yeah. down on yeah. here in the comments, and uh, it sounds fantastic. Man, this, how small would you have to cut up the sun-dried tomatoes? Like really, really small, or would you leave? Well, chunk? I think yeah, they usually come like kind of chopped up um, in in the jars, um, like pretty small, and then you chop them up into yeah. little pieces. It looks like, but okay. yeah, interesting. Do you think like they're actually sun-dried anymore, or is it like in a factory? Oh, no. probably like like a chemical. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. All right, but the winner goes to Mike Irish, who's been subscribed for eight years. That is crazy, man. Wow. Eight, eight Kevin, like, all of your children were not born at that point. Like, this that's, is that's very true. My oldest is six, so, Jeez. yeah. So uh, Mike Irish says, being both Irish and Cajun, I would turn Ricky into an Irish potato gelat with some Tony Sacheris. Like... <laughs> like sausage, Cajun seasoning sprinkled all over it, and then I would wash it down with a pint of Guinness. Well, man, that's like you just crossing all the cultures there. That's that's pretty spectacular. Because, I mean, Cajun isn't just Cajun. It's like, what, French and, uh, I don't it's know. Like, like French, Canadian, uh, Louisiana. Like it's, Yeah, it's, right? It's, it's, it's like it's all over the – in, like, Caribbean, isn't there a little bit of Caribbean in there? Yeah, probably. It's crazy. <laughs> so, like, and then Irish, you throw Irish in there. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's just a smorgasbord 
of uh, of cultures and flavors. So uh, Mike Irish wins a copy of the Argus issue number one, signed by Mr. Mark Bertolini, the co-creator and writer of the book. Great guy. Argus issue two is available now uh, digitally. It's not available yeah. in print right now, but you can check that out at Action Lab, uh, Action Lab Comics. Um, so thank you, Mike Irish, for your long-term viewership and your awesome answer to the question. Ricky, what should the question be this week? What do you think? Oh, man. Um, what is something that you can auction from your collection to raise a lot of money? Like, if <laughs> What is... What is something that's valuable in your collection that you can give to Stadium Comics? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, okay, how about just what's the most valuable thing in your collection? Okay, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, it doesn't even have to be valuable. Like, what, like, like in terms of money, like, what is, what is the thing yeah. in your collection that you're, that you are most, uh, is most valuable to you? That could be yeah. monetary value, that could be just, uh, you know, personal uh, personal value to you. Um, to me, it is. Oh, let's see if I can get this here. Here, Ricky, entertain everybody for a moment. All right. Well, I can talk about mine. Uh, I think for me, the one thing that's probably the most valuable. Um, that's a tough one. Maybe Deep Sea. I have like a print. I have like a printer proof version of deep sea that was like the first book i ever did it's pretty good so i just said deep sea is like my uh my most valuable comic because it's the first that one makes I sense. Did. yeah it has a lot of sentimental value to you uh my favorite thing is um the stadium comics this was our one of our, our first uh major exclusive that we did with uh marvel comics a long time ago uh, 2012. No, it was before 2012. It was 2011. We got it signed in 2012 by Stan Lee. And it's uh, Spider-Man sta Saves Stadium Comics on the front. Uh, illustration of me and Rob. Uh, me without a beard at the time. Um, and this illustration was done by Matt Tonks, uh, who's a great artist and, uh, and friend of ours at Stadium. Um, and it was the opportunity to get his art on the cover of a Marvel yeah. book as well. And the uh, art of Time Nerds, no? Time Nerds, stadium classic uh, webcomic. Um, so <laughs> this is this is my uh, favorite thing in my collection, signed by Stan Lee. On a, did you actually on a, meet Stan Lee, or did someone get that signed for you? Someone got a, <laughs> someone got a sign for me. I'm not going to stand in line to see Stan Lee, no. Uh, yeah. I've I've run into Stan Lee a, a bunch of times. That uh, oh yeah, just you just show. run into, you just bump into him casually. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Stan and I go way back. All right, okay. All right, so that's an awesome question. Let's see what the answers are, and uh, the winner will get a prize to be determined. Something cool, I promise. Um, cool stadium exclusive. One of one of these books. Not one of these particular ones on the wall. An ungraded version. One of these books. Get something nice. All right, Ricky. Anything else we should cover before we go today? Uh, no, man. I think I think that's all. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, you know, comics will be back soon. Let's just all hang in there. Uh, things are going to be okay. Uh, lots of stuff. Uh, Lots of stuff in the works, I know, from the publishers and the distributors and the creators, and uh, comics are going to come back from this really strong. I can feel it. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys all next time. Take care.